how can anybody deny climate change now in the wake of what we've seen in the past year? So I think it forces us to confront the reality that uh, things won't always continue to progress. So I think we simply have to get over our differences. And, and that, that will be difficult. It's the young people who are inspiring us to, to act um, in saving the planet. I love the sea. I grew up by the sea. I love the sight, the smell, the sound of the sea. My last job, uh, I was running a university right on the Scottish coast. Um, so I love the sea and I've seen the impact of climate change on the sea in a place I love. Every summer for the past 35 years, my family and I have gone to Martha's Vineyard. There's a particular beach there called Lucy Vincent Beach and we walk to this beach every day. And over this 35 years, we've seen the steady erosion of the cliffs and the rocks. And every year we take a picture of the receding rocks, or the receding cliffs, the declining rocks. And this summer, the great cliff was actually gone and it was heartbreaking. We had friends there in the winter had sent us photos and we couldn't believe it. So as soon as we arrived in the vineyard, we all ran down to Lucy Vincent Beach and the the rocks were gone and the cliff had receded dramatically. So the power, seeing, seeing that as clear evidence of the impact, powerful impact of climate change. Also this summer, I was on the northeast coast of the United States and we were hit by Hurricane Henri and Hurricane Ida. These extreme weather events, one right after another, are just unheard of. And again, just bringing home to us that the harsh, reality of climate change. How can anybody deny climate change now in the wake of what we've seen in the past year, from fires in, in California to extraordinary events in Australia to, to um, the southern United States, hurricanes, indeed across the globe, 2021 has brought it home to everyone surely that we can no longer deny the reality that is climate change. It's the young people who are inspiring us to, to act um, in saving the planet. They are mobilized on this issue across the world in a way that they haven't really been mobilized on, on any other issue. And it's easy to understand why. It's, it's their world. So I think we can learn from young people, from their passion, from their commitment, and from the desire to act globally, because this is a global problem, will only be addressed effectively if we all work together to address it. And young people are, are showing us that. So we, the older generation, I think our responsibility is to provide them with the tools they need, the education they need to understand the science, the social science they need to understand public policy and effective action. So our role as educators, I think, is to give them the tools they need, but really they're the inspirational ones and they're inspiring us. The last few decades have actually seen a rise in fragmentation globally, a rise in nationalism. We've seen the fragmentation of international agreements. Um, and that doesn't bode well because we're all in this together when it comes to climate change. My hope is that we can learn from the experience of the pandemic. Um, the pandemic has taught us that global problems require global responses. None of us are going to be safe until everybody is vaccinated, we know that. The pandemic, I think, has also shaken us out of complacency. We in the West certainly have assumed progress is inevitable, but uh, we've all had to lock down and shut down our economies in the wake of this pandemic. So I think it forces us to confront the reality that uh, things won't always continue to progress. I think the pandemic too has required us to change our behavior in order to protect our grandparents who are most vulnerable to this, to this pandemic. And I think climate change is requiring us to change our behavior to protect our grandchildren who will bear the brunt if we, uh, if we ignore this. So I think we simply have to get over our differences. And, and that, that will be difficult. Uh, the global community has never been very good at this. Um, and it will require understanding the perspective of other countries. Again, the West has been fortunate to 
fuel its economic development without much regard for the consumption of natural resources. And now we, were, we are asking other countries who don't, aren't as developed as we are to constrain their activities. And I can see why they might feel that's unfair. So we have to empathize with their position and, and we have to fashion a response that is accepted as, as global uh, and where we all share the pain and we understand that we're all coming from, from different perspectives and from different backgrounds. Well, I very much hope that the Global Alliance of Universities on Climate will have a very powerful legacy. We have responsibility to model the behaviour that we want the next generation uh, to practice and that we want governments to practice. So we should form the kinds of alliances, we should get over internal competition, we should behave the way we're asking states to behave. Um, but the other thing really is that the main contribution our universities are going to make to climate change is in our research. We here at Oxford and in many other universities around the world we are doing cutting edge research on a whole raft of issues pertaining to climate um, and we will continue to do that. We are helping to develop alternate energies, studying water security, developing new technologies, um, new forms of energy storage. All of this will be imperative to, uh, to addressing climate change. So I think our, while we have a responsibility to model the behavior we want others to adopt and to educate our students to have the tools to respond effectively, uh, I think our main contribution will be in the research we conduct. Well, we at Oxford are doing two things. First of all, we are trying to change our own behavior. We have made a commitment that we will be carbon neutral by 2035 and that we will contribute to net biodiversity gain. This is expensive, uh, it requires resources, it requires commitment, it requires discipline, and it requires all of us acting together and being prepared to change our behavior. Change the way we heat our buildings, change the way we build new buildings, change the way we travel. We at Oxford are bringing all our researchers who work on climate change related issues together in the Oxford Network for the Environment. We're bringing together researchers who are developing next generation solar panels, people who are developing lithium ion batteries, geographers, engineers, indeed social scientists, all across the university working on a host of issues are coming together. And this, I think, will be our main contribution.